Hi everyone, Tom Wolf here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I created this pad sound in Arturo Pigments. Mod wheel. Okay, so we've obviously got this very kind of ethereal ambient pad. Uh, this is a patch called Failure of Judgment, and it's from my sound bank recapture uh, for Arturia Pigments 2. So I'm going to deconstruct this patch and show you exactly how I created it. It's quite a simple one, so let's get started. So I've already deconstructed this patch here. Um, it's made up of both the engines. On engine one, we've got a sample. Now this is one of the samples that uh, I recorded for my sound bank recapture and was included with recapture. So if you've not got that sound bank, you're not gonna be able to create this patch identically. Um, but of course you can substitute this sound source for any of the other sound sources that are in pigments. There's a lot of them. And you know, we've even got an entire section here of synth pads, which has got quite a lot of different sounds in there. So play about it doesn't necessarily need to match this patch um see what you can do but anyway on engine one i've used this sound source called slim chord which i believe i recorded from um my behringer model d uh and it sounds like this okay let's uh, just go back to the start on that one Okay, so the raw sound source is quite a bright kind of chordal patch. It's already got the notes of the chord in it. If I just play one note. So you can hear it's already a chord. Um, so what I then did, so we're just going to put the uh, sample start back to where it was. So that was just about there. So our sample, when we hit a key, it's going to be starting from the middle of the patch. So we lose this kind of attack and where it builds up. The actual sound source itself has got um, some slight filtering as the sound opens, the filter opens a little bit. So we're kind of going to the brightest point here. Um, this patch doesn't use the granular engine at all. This is just looping the sound. So in the edit window, we're gonna switch on loop and you can now see our loop area. So it's looping from just after where our sample starts and then it's gonna finish looping before it kind of starts decaying and before that sound reaches its peak. Um, I've also switched on the loop fade. This means that uh, it's gonna sound smooth when it loops round. We didn't want it to be too jarring when it loops round, so I wanted it to be nice and smooth. So you can kind of notice where it changes, but not too much, which, you know, gives it quite a smooth quality as opposed to obviously if we if we put the loop fade all the way down quite a jarring loop there okay uh, i've also tweaked the tuning for this sample as well um, because this is recorded from an analog synth analog synths by their nature aren't you know pitch perfect um so I tuned this to my second engine using the fine tuning. I set the root note as well so that we've got that and it's playing in the same pitch as engine two. So now we've got engine one looping. Let's go over to engine two and we'll play that on its own. So engine two, we've got set to the wavetable engine and it's using a wavetable called MB2 ring, which is in the synthesizer section. So let's just have a little listen to that. It's quite a bright, sharp wavetable there. Now, I also modulated the wavetable position. So as you can see, that's roughly center at the moment. Um, that was being controlled by LFO1. So let's switch that on. So we'll switch that on. If we look over here, 
This is our LFO one, got it set to a sine wave. It's synced and as you can see, it's moving incredibly slowly. So I think it, yeah, synced to eight bars for a full cycle. Uh, it's set to legato. So whenever I press a new key, it's gonna stay in its position unless I remove all of my hands from the keyboards and then start again. It'll start in a different position. Okay, so that's also left on bipolar. So that's going to be going either side of where my wavetable position is. And as you can see, it's not affecting it too much. So we can actually see how large the sweep is here and how quickly or rather how slowly it is in fact sweeping. So it's also worth noting we've got our tuning turned up 12 semitones. So this is playing an octave above our sample and the unison engine is switched on as well. So unison is set to classic mode. It's got two voices and the detune is up just a little bit as well as the stereo being halfway up. So if we remove the unison, it's a lot thinner, a lot drier. That just makes it bit fatter okay we're not doing anything here with the frequency modulation so we've not got any frequency mod or phase mod or anything like that we're just using it as a wavetable oscillator let's also quickly look at our envelope as well so our vca envelope is controlling the volume of both of the engines and as you can see we've got a very slow attack uh 7.63 seconds uh, to get to the full volume sustain is on maximum and then we've got quite a long release as well 4.35 seconds for that so that's why we're getting that really delicate start and quite slow but big increase in volume there so let's switch both engines on now and hear them together Okay, so it's quite a big sound, but it's very bright and it's very dry as well. There's not, um, it doesn't sound great yet. So that's where our filters are going to come in. So firstly, we're going to switch on filter one. So filter one is set to the matrix 12 filter type. Uh, we've got it set to low pass 24. Cutoff is set to just below halfway, so 368 hertz. There's no resonance on this. And we've got a little bit of keyboard follow happening as well, which means that as we play further up the keyboard, the cutoff is going to be slightly more open. So we still get those kind of bright top notes, which is what we want with the pad, really. So we're also controlling this with envelope two. So we'll come over here and we'll switch that on. We've got our filter one cutoff being controlled there won't switch filter two on just yet so let's play that so you can now hear the brightness is building as well so it starts off as a duller sound and then we open up the filter which then goes into this kind of bright sound and it helps with that build and to create that kind of sweeping ambient effect. Uh, if we look at envelope two, we've got a very long attack again, just over nine seconds. Uh, the sustain isn't all the way up, but we've got a long decay with a bit of a decayed curve here as well. So once it's reached, um, once the attack period is finished, it's going to drop off slightly before it sustains at a certain level. So the sound will get to a kind of peak brightness before dipping off a little bit. We've then got quite a long release set for that as well. So if I play that again, so you can hear that our sample, the chord, is not quite so bright, but we've still got a little bit of our wavetable, kind of that full brightness coming in. So that's because of our second filter. So let's switch that on. So on our second filter, we've got it set to multi-mode and the multi-mode is set to low pass 24 again. So they're essentially very similar, um, but because of the different filter types, they have different characteristics. So we've got our cutoff set to just over half, it's at 745 hertz. We've got a bit of resonance on this one. And again, we've got a little bit of keyboard follow there. 
we've got our filters set to series. So what that means is when our sound comes out of our engines, it's going to be fed into our filters. And then filter one will run directly into filter two. If we had it set to parallel, which is all the way over here, we could send sound into filter one and then it would come straight out of our amp without being touched by filter two. So we could then change our filter mix here so that we've then got some coming directly out of filter two and directly out of our output. And obviously we can blend between the filters here. But for this patch, it's gonna run through filter one and through filter two. Now, the reason we were still, when we had filter two off, getting that buzzy wavetable kind of sound, you'll notice on the sample, we've got it's, the filter mix set to 100% for filter one. On our wavetable, we've actually got it set to come out of filter two a bit as well. So we've got some of the clean, bright signal going into filter two. So when we have filter two bypassed, we're actually still hearing some of that buzziness. But now we're switching filter two on, that will remove that kind of top endiness. We get a much kind of deeper sound there. So that's kind of, um, so that second filter is giving us a little bit of extra weight to the patch. It's kind of letting a bit of this uh, bright wavetable through to the filter and then cutting that off as well as providing another little bit of um, depth for everything that's coming out of filter one as well. So we're adding a bit of resonance to that too. And that's creating the extra character for the patch. Um, all we need to do now is switch on the cutoff filter two. So that is also routed to envelope two, same as filter one. So let's switch that on. And now when we hold down our note, we're going to be having that open up as well. It starts off quite dark and distant and builds and gets brighter. So that's giving us this really kind of uh, quite deep and warm pad. Um, but we're still not there yet. It's not as ambient. It's not as nice. It's not as kind of uh, polished as the finished patch. So for that, we're going to look at our effects. So we've got two effects that are kind of helping us with that uh, constant sound for the patch. The first one is the chorus. So let's switch that on and come over to our effects bus A. So you can already hear that chorus working and adding some kind of modulated movement to it. We've got the dry wet amount set to 50%, very low rate for this. Um, the delays of about a third, feedbacks of about a third. We've got about half in the way of depth. So it, it is affecting it quite a lot. Um, stereo button set on so that we've got this nice wide stereo image. And then we've got three voices as well. So that is providing quite a bit of modulation on our patch. And the ambience really comes from the reverb. So the reverb at the moment is on our send bus. Okay, so let's switch the send bus on and then we'll switch the reverb on as well. Now, we're still not going to hear that. If we look over here at our send, we are sending the sound into our effects send but we've got our return turned all the way down. And that's because I have mapped the reverb to be controllable by a macro. Now, it's got a big, uh, you know, this reverb is huge. It's got this gigantic ambient tail, but obviously this isn't to everyone's taste. And also it can make it quite difficult to mix into your tracks. So I've created this reverb macro so that you can tweak the amount of reverb in the patch to... Um, easily change that if you need to when you're mixing the track or blending this sound with other sounds. So let's make sure our macro four is switched on. So we'll switch that on. Um, so now you can see that we've got this range here. And at the moment, macro is set to be fully on. So now when we play our sound, we're going to get that reverb. We've got this huge reverb going on there. It's making this patch really ambient. And you can just hear that 
really long reverb tail. Love it. Okay, so um, for this reverb, we've got the wet amount to 100% because it is on ascend, so we don't want any of the dry signal in there. Uh, the decay is set to pretty high. The size is quite high, full stereo width, quite a long pre-delay, 29 milliseconds, not huge, but um, certainly not short pre-delay there. And then we've got a little bit of damping as well and some high pass and low pass there, um, which is just kind of cutting off the end. So we didn't want the reverb to be too deep and muddy and sort of um, messing up our patch. Um, and we don't want it to be too bright either. So all that's left for this patch, that is our main sound. So as I said, it's not particularly complicated. Um, all that's left is our macros and our mod wheel. So let's have a little look at the macros. So macro one you can see is labeled grit. So what that's controlling is the wave folder here on FX bus A. So let's click over to bus A. So we've got our wave folder drive up fairly high here and we've got the type set to sine wave um, at the moment the dry wet amount is set to zero percent so without our macro switched on we're not hearing any of the wave folder so let's switch our macro on and you can see it's set to 0 0.50 so that means and you can see that visually there when our macro is fully open it's going to be 50 percent dry 50 percent wet signal so Let's hear what that does to our patch. So that adds some nice kind of distorted grittiness to it, which obviously isn't to everyone's taste. And you can kind of blend it in and less is more. That just gives it a little bit of extra kind of character. Okay, so we get that little bit of extra grit, which is really nice. And that's going to sustain our notes there. So let's hit the panic button. Um, so on macro two, we're controlling the resonance of the filters. So that is controlling both of our filters. Let's click on macro two. Um, so filter one resonance, switch that on. Filter two resonance, both pretty much the same amount of resonance that we're adding there. And this is going to give us a slightly brighter sound. Um, and it's going to sound a bit more kind of sweeping as the filters open up because it's going to have that extra kind of resonance peak. So here it just adds something to the top there. Gives it a little bit of extra kind of You know something um and then on macro three we've got it controlling a tremolo okay now uh if you've heard any of my patches before you'll know that i really enjoy tremolos um because i work in the kind of cinematic area of sound design and rhythm can be a huge part of that even with pads um you can instantly transform a cue just by turning smooth sounds into rhythmic sounds and creating that kind of tension that rhythm can create. So I like to use tremolo. So on this patch, I have included that on the macros. So this is basically set up as a sidechain. So you can see sidechain LFO2 to bus B volume. So what that means is our LFO2 is controlling our effects bus B volume. Now the reason why we're controlling bus B is because at the moment we've got our effects set to be in series. So bus A then feeds into bus B, kind of like with our filters where we could have our filters in series or parallel. If we change that, uh, then we would have two separate kind of outputs. So we would have the sound coming into bus A, going through our effects here, and then out. And the original sound also coming into bus B, going through our effects here and going out. Because we are in series mode, it's going from bus A into bus B and then out. So that means that bus B is kind of our final volume control. So I'm adding the LFO control 
to my bus B volume so that it's controlling that kind of final that final volume so we get the full tremolo effect so let's switch on our LFO2 now you'll also notice that we've side chained this to macro 3 and it's side chained full value which is 1.0 so that means um, our macro 3 is going to control the amount that we're affecting this LFO so when our macro is completely off as it is now we're not going to get any of that LFO affecting the bus B volume but when we have it all the way up we're now going to have that full control so let's show you that so there we go got that full tremolo now So that's just a really nice effect to be able to kind of move in and out to create some movement within your cues when you're using this patch. So lastly, we've got our mod wheel. So if you remember from when I played the full patch at the start, on the mod wheel we had this kind of phasey sound. Um, so all we've got is our phaser on bus B here, which is currently muted. So switch it on. And currently, again, we've got dry wet signal set to 0%, so it's a fully dry sound. We've got it set up to 10 poles, a uh, little, you know, LFO mount at 2.82, and the LFO wave is set to triangle. And then we've got it set to 0.446 hertz. Uh, frequency is quite high, and feedback is quite high. Um, let's switch on our mod wheel control, because at the moment we're not going to get any phaser. So over here we've got our mod wheel. We can switch that on and because that's set to 0.75 that means we're going to get 75% wet signal to dry signal when we open our mod wheel. And there's our phaser. Okay, so that's our patch. Um, as I say, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, the sound source in Engine A is a sample from my set recapture. So if you haven't got the set recapture, you're not going to be able to create this sound exactly. But you can play about with it. This is kind of the idea of this uh, video was to give you the tools to create this kind of sound and understand how this kind of sound is created, what affects what, and what you can do so obviously by changing that sound source you're going to get different results but that's probably a good thing because you do want to be creating your own patch so you can go through the sample library and look at all different kinds of sounds um, and try them out experiment see what works see what doesn't work um, thank you for watching the video i do hope you found it useful uh, if you would like to check out recapture it's a set of 100 patches and 37 samples you'll find a link to it in the description below and that will take you to my website where you can check it out there's walkthrough videos uh, there's sound demos done by a series of very talented uh, musicians who've created tracks using these patches um, so check that out I am going to make more of these videos and I do it for various different synths as well and also tutorials. So if you do want to keep in touch with those, make sure you hit subscribe. Thank you for watching. Until next time, take care.